Back to RGB, History Revisited, a 30-minute show just about history in the Rio Grande Valley. I'm Marlene Rodriguez here at Texas Southmost College. For those of you just tuning in, I took the viewers inside Texas Southmost College and its history. Then we looked at the Masonic Lodge, and then we looked at the Stegman Building, and now we're going to look at Landritz Locksmith. Where we are is a precious uh, retreat back into the past. This is a mom and pop type store that has somewhat vanished from the horizon in modern times. It is the locksmith's business. If you think about the uh, various departments that are in the modern day superstores, each one of those departments could be a cubicle where a, uh, a family business would have been. And that's what this was. This was a family business and is a family business for the last 80 years. Uh, it prevailed in Brownsville as, a, as the specialty store on locks for the greater portion of its time. And uh, the, the service that they render is and is and was so much more replete than what you find in the modern setting. A specialty store, or in this case, a locksmith, is somebody that, that does exactly that. They specialize in a profession, in a trade. Back before there were the malls, which is, again, we're going on two to three generations before the present, there were a whole series of specialty stores. We were considered to be the nation of shopkeepers. And that particular phrase came through from Adam Smith back in 1776, and it referred to the specialties of various families and how they built up their, their particular businesses. Now, if you jump back into modern times now, the younger generation has really rarely ever seen this because uh, the, the specialty that these families did provided a service and also it, it provided a more of a concentrated effort into knowing what that product was. In the late 40s, this particular business transitioned on over into specializing in lock services. Now, that's highly important because if you go to a superstore, as it stands today, and you say, I want a, a key for this particular lock, well, do you have the key? No, I don't have the key. But a specialty shop such as this can fabricate that key. And they've been doing so, they've been relied upon for all of these years to, to do that. This shop is very dear to the hearts of the older generation of Brownsville because it, it lines itself up with the, with the icons of those particular mom and pops that existed throughout the years. We're talking about Denrus Pharmacy, again, a pharmacy. Uh, the Haberdasher, a clothier, which was Pearl Brothers. Those types of shops were, were a source to go to by the population here. And Landris, all through this period, has been a source to go to. The life of a locksmith is like the life of a doctor to a particular degree. Because if somebody gets locked out of their house, somebody's got to come in the picture and let them in. So I can venture to say that all through the hours, whether it be in the late hours after that sign says closed, the calls were still received and said, could you please help me? And that's what they did. Happily enough, this particular site and the classic architecture that's here will not be bulldozed, will not be demolished. Now, that is a beautiful revelation for a lot of people. Brownsville Independent School District has purchased this site and they have pledged in order to bring it back to the way that it was close enough in terms of, of utilizing this architecture into the total scheme of things for the revitalization of this part of the city. The location that we're at now, which is now called Landreth's Lock Service, began by the Landreth family in 1939. It started out as an auto service uh, with Willis and with Jeep and Packard, and then it evolved on over into being a locksmith. But from 1939 to present, that can tell you 80 years of dedicated service that has been on this spot. 
That's right, and just like Fort Brown, the Masonic Lodge and the Stegman Building, the Landritz Locksmith will also be repurposed for the Brownsville Independent School District, possibly for Sam Stadium. And this is what historians want, for these old buildings to be preserved and repurposed so people can continue admiring them for generations to come. Thank you so much for watching RGV History Revisited. We hope to see you next time. I hope you had as much fun as I did.